Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, and uh, we're going to do a little history lesson today um, and talk about the history of the pump and dump mob scam on Wall Street. Um, it's been going on for over 50 years. It, it really revolutionized the way LCN can get into the financial sector. And uh, it all centered around um, a, a tiny little drill company down in Texas. And the pioneer of what became known as the pump and dump scam, which you know has been chronicled in you know, a countless amount of books and documentaries, films, uh, Boiler Room, Wolf of Wall Street, Wall Street, uh, and... Uh, it all started with Frank Copa, and uh, Frank died this week in witness protection, was living uh, under an assumed identity in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, it's pretty uh, historic on multiple fronts, not just pioneering the, the pump and dunk, but also becoming the first made member of the Bonanno crime family to turn government witness, which started the domino effect that led to Joe Messino um, becoming a cooperator, the first uh, official New York godfather, and the Bonanos losing uh, quite a, a bit of juice and esteem. But uh, I learned some stuff about Frank Coppola that I, I didn't know. Uh, I knew about the pump and dump. I learned a little bit more about the specifics of it um, since he's passed away. But some, some of the stuff that I learned from talking to people and, and looking at some uh, FBI 302s and stuff, some of my perception of, of COPA uh, was wrong. And uh, I, I like the fact that I now know. Uh, I kind of, I, ha I was under the impression, and this is, you know, it's on me for not knowing what I didn't know or assuming that, uh, that COPA was somebody that rode the coattails of Joe Messino to levels of power that he wouldn't have had without Joe Messino. But it appears that that is, again, that that's not true. Uh, he, from what I, from, from my research now, uh, he was in very uh, high regard with members of the Bananos before Messino and, and Rusty Rustelli uh, took control of the family in 79 and had been an acting capo all the way back in 78, a year after he got his button. So, yes, being, you know, getting close to Joe Messino obviously aided him. Uh, he's known as a, you know, kind of a legendary earner and uh, uh, entrepreneur in in mob history, guy that really knew how to make money in, in a lot of different, you know, a lot of different ways. Um, but he wasn't a a softy or a a guy that hadn't got his hands dirty. And I think some of that was my impression. Again, I'm making assumptions, and I shouldn't have. I knew that he had some role in in Sonny Black's uh, murder uh, in in eighty one, but uh, I, I guess I just didn't realize how much of a fast riser he was considered in the seventies survived a, a attempt on his life in a car bombing in 78 got his button in 77 at the same ceremony that Baldo Amato and Cesare Bonaventure did uh, made by Carlo, uh, sorry, made by Carmine Galante and was sponsored and mentored uh, by the Valvo brothers, Maddie and Benny Valvo. Uh, but let's just go back and just really quickly uh, break down what he was doing um, in the early 70s on Wall Street, got a hold of a, uh, a a drill company that sold to like oil rigs and, and whatnot, and I called Tucker Drill, and uh, blueprinted or created this template for uh, how you manufacture value in a stock that has no value, um, how you artificially inflate a stock. And with Tucker Drill between uh, 1972 and 19, uh, I think the indictment came down in 76 or 77. I think the scheme began 
uh, around 72 or 73. Uh, anyway, they, they Frank Coppa gets his uh, uh, gets controlling uh, ownership of stock in in Tucker Drill and gets a lot of his goons to go around to to Wall Street brokerage houses uh, in the early to mid 70s and you know through intimidation tactics get them to sell. Uh, their clients on buying stock in Tucker Drill, a, a worthless little drill company that was eventually, in, you know, the stock was inflated to the point where they're they're selling on par with, you know, like uh, I'm exaggerating here, being a little hyperbolic, but you know, Procter and Gamble and IBM, and they were selling at a, a level that was so beyond who they were as a company, and you know, pump it up. Uh, and then at the, at the point where it's, you know, reached its value, you sell and then you dump the stock and the whole thing comes crumbling down and a lot of people have lost a lot of money. And then you, you know, rinse and repeat. So, you know, I, uh, if people from the well, fans of the Sopranos, you know, starter season two, um, Christopher Moltisanti sets up shop in a wall street uh, boiler room and has the, the two guys, uh, uh, one led by you know one of them played by Lilo Brancato, Maddie Drinkwater, uh, doing pump and dumps with uh, Wabistics. So that was really what you know Frank Coppola's legacy is. Um, in some ways, more so than being the first Bonanno uh, member to, to flip. So keep checking back here at the OG for all the uh, latest. Uh, breaking news when it comes to organized crime, uncovering the underworld in North America. Uh, check the Patreon for you know some different types of content and a little bit more analytical, deep dives, uh, nerdy little side rants, and um, you know not as newsy, more you know breaking things down at a uh, at a more granular level. And uh, like, share, subscribe. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out.